They've called him a lot of things. They called him a lot of things, man. They call him a lot of things, man. You know, but only he can tell you who he is, my man. Yeah. Die night. How you doing, brother? What's up? What's up? I'm good. I'm good, man. I'm good. Good. So good to see you, man. So good to see you. You know, uh, I've had a lot of people, man, wanting to actually. Um, they want me to have a chat with you because there's a lot of things on people's minds that they haven't had the opportunity to do. We'll get into that when the time comes, brother. But for now, man, you know, we're out here in Australia. There are a couple of people who won't know who you are, you know. So let's just start there, bro. Like, who who are you? Where am I? To- where are you based right now in the world? Okay. Um, I think the name is obviously popping up, you know, uh, on the screen. The name is Shadai, Shadai Knight. Mm, how would I say, when it comes to people knowing me, people just know me for being the guy who's, uh, let's say, provocative, controversial, for saying things that uh, most people um, are not willing or are afraid to say. That's who Shadai is. The guy who says what you say in secret, but I say it in public. Bruh. Right, right. I think I think that's perfect the way you've said it. Now, we have a lot of lies, man. We have a lot of conversations. One thing that has come up before is that, uh, so you, you're in Zimbabwe. You're Zimbabwean, yeah? Yes, yeah. so I'm Zimbabwean. Right. So one thing that has come up before in our chats is that Zimbabwean guys are actually, um, a lot of them, they're very they're soft-spoken, quiet, not very confident. And now out here you come, you know, you seem to be an outlier of sorts, you know, like, are you fully, fully Zimbabwean? Or is this a misunderstanding on people, you know, of, of how Zimbabwean dudes are? Uh, uh, I would say maybe um, when people, you know, give, uh, you know, that assumption about Zimbabweans, maybe they're talking about the Zimbabweans who are, you know, in the diaspora who've been, you know, uh, how do I say it? A bit, um, brainwashed, okay. a bit programmed by what they're seeing there and what they're experiencing, what they're experiencing there and how they are living there. But if you come, you know, like to the motherland, like Zim, 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 Zim guys are some of the, you know, alpha dudes you ever meet. For real? Wow. Yes. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. That's interesting, man. That's interesting. That's interesting. So, yeah, so so obviously you came up. A lot of people now are starting to associate you with you with, with Andrew Tate with this whole conversation about masculinity, relationships, etc. I mean, when you first came through into the scene, is, is that what your intention was or were you focusing on something else? Um, the thing is, uh, when I started um, writing on my Twitter account, uh, where most people know me from, um, that was like... Um, I think just before we got into the COVID year, I think 2019 and 2020, that's when COVID, you know, like became uh, a pandemic, you know. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was just me expressing things that I did uh, find wrong. Like, you know, why is it that our society is too biased towards women? What have men done? You know, what is the crime? What is our crime? You know, so... As it happened, as I was doing my shit, you know, just writing my thoughts, things that I felt, I also bumped into the Godfather, you know, um, Andrew Tate. Mm. And then I was, you know, it was like, uh, dude, this is the person that I've been, you know, like waiting for my whole life. You know, he's saying the things that I want to say in the right way with the correct words. And come on, Andrew Tate. Tate is very, very, very charismatic. Yeah, 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 yeah. right. But before you knew Andrew Tate, did you know anyone else in that particular space? Because you say, you mentioned the word uh, Godfather. A lot of people would say, I don't know if you've ever heard of Rollo Tomasi. Yeah, um, Rollo Tomasi. Rollo Tomasi as well is the Godfather, especially now when it comes to writing, you know, his books. And many people would say, like, his books inspired every other person who's talking about, you know, masculinity or the red pill, like the whole manosphere. Mm. It would uh, be an injustice to say uh, Rolo Thomas didn't contribute immensely to it because he was like one of the very, 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 very best guys, you know, to be out there, you know, saying this isn't right. This isn't right. This isn't right. Yes. But yeah, when it comes yeah. to the confidence, the boldness, you know, Andrew Tate, uh, he was just like blunt. He would just say it as it is. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, no, I, I definitely agree with what you're saying, man. Um, for people who don't know, what is the manosphere? Hmm. The manosphere is basically uh, a movement that aims to empower, to enlighten men about who they are, to know that they are also valuable. Simple as that. It's simply about men, uh, you know, awakening up to their true potential, to who they truly are, because. For a long time, men have been demonized, bastardized. They've been, you know, undermined. And it's time for men to reclaim their spot, to reclaim their manhood. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. No, I hear you. I hear you, bro. So, yeah. Look, man, without further ado, we're going to get straight into it. One of the things that people wanted me to ask you is, do you hate women? Why would I hate women? Why would any man hate women? That's not the right view. If you hate women, I would say maybe... Uh, we call it what the black pill. I don't hate women. I love women. That is why I'm actually saying these things because it hurts me, you know, like deep down seeing these women, you know, like chipping themselves. Back in the day, you know, women were actually, how do I say it, valued and they knew their value as well. But now we've got into a point where women undervalue them themselves, thinking. Right, that they have to be like men. When you say you want to be like men, it otherwise it means that you see womanhood as something that isn't worth it being. Right. When you say women are devaluing themselves, though, what do you mean by that? Come on. First and foremost, um, the propaganda that has been pushed on uh, women, uh, you know, participating or becoming part of the casual sex trade, you know, like the woke up couch. Come on, that is women undervaluing themselves, like just have sex for the sake of having sex. No, 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 no. doesn't work like that. So is it fair then to say that if you think that or say that women shouldn't be having like a lot of casual sex, that you hold the same view for men? No, because men and women are different now. That's the thing. Men and women are different. Especially even when it comes to when it comes to the way we are created biologically in regards to sex. That is why you would need uh one man, I'll give you a simple example. One man can impregnate hundred women, mm. but uh you know, hundred women can only get pregnant once for nine months. But you know, in those nine months the men would have impregnated thousands, millions, maybe even of women. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I hear you, but but on that case though, you're referring more to procreation though, right? So in terms of the recreational yes, recreational okay. sex. Let's talk about let's talk about the you know the pleasure side. Mm. Women who get to have sex with many men tend to not enjoy the sex. That is why you see most married women who got into these marriages um, after having been in the streets. They end up now having to cheat on their men. They end up feeling uh, like they settled for the men uh, who ended up marrying them. But it's different for men. Even look at the pornsters. Why do you think that the majority of pornsters who end up uh, committing suicide are women compared to the men? When a man is having sex with many people, he's happy. He's smiling ear to ear. When a woman is having sex with many men, she gets depressed. That is why you see we've got a generation of women who, despite uh, making the most money uh, compared to the previous generations, they are hooked on antidepressants. Some of it stems from sleeping around a lot. Mm. But then don't you say that's a bit of a generalization, though? No. Because So as an example, right? So if we have a look and say, okay, well, I hear you in terms of the suicide statistics, but then men are more likely to, you know, quote unquote, unalive themselves compared to women. Right. No. Um, wouldn't you say also that okay. that that that's a problem no. that's related to that? that? Yeah. You're not looking at it uh, from you know a general uh, you know uh, aspect. Now you're talking about like in general, why do men commit suicides more than women? Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. that's the topic. Now you're talking about, and the reason why men commit suicides more than women is that men have to deal with women. Women don't have to deal with men. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. <laughs> my god <laughs> right. If these right women if these women were dealing with women they would also be committing suicide for example why do you think that when it comes to same-sex marriages um the brothers 
the homosexual, you know, uh, the homosexual brothers, their marriages tend to last more compared to lesbian marriages. You can check the statistics because a woman cannot stand a woman. Women are just, you know, chaotic. Yeah. by their nature they're just chaotic by their nature yeah look i will say you you've got a point especially as well when it comes to domestic abuse lesbian relationships actually have the highest uh domestic abuse uh compared to any yes. other relationship right yes. H- however though going yeah go yeah go ahead go ahead yeah you, you bring a very interesting point you know like lesbian marriages tend to be more abusive compared to uh the homosexual uh, marriages right mm. Mm -hmm. Which is why I always argue against the notion that men are abusive. You know, like we've got this uh, whole agenda being pushed, uh, gender-based violence. And when they say gender-based violence, they're simply saying men being violent against women. But what they don't tend to look is it. Uh, What, uh, how can we define, you know, like um, abuse? Mm -hmm. We need to be able to define abuse because we are only looking at the physical aspect of abuse. Women don't uh, get to be um, physically abusive because they are limited uh, biologically, but they tend to be emotionally abusive. They tend Mm -hmm. to be emotionally abusive. In most cases, when you see, I'm not justifying uh, violence in any way. I know these people caught me wrong, but here's the thing. Most of the times, 99% of the times, Mm. when a man ends up being violent, being physically violent to a woman, it is actually a reaction to the emotional violence that the woman has done to him. Because men, for some reason, we cannot, um, how do I say it, Um, win in in psychological uh, warfare against women. A woman will undermine you in ways, you know, we, we're just using a mouth. She will undermine you in ways you can't even imagine, in ways you can't even, you know, respond to. And the only go-to response we have as men is what? Physical. Because even among us as men, we've got certain mm-hmm. boundaries. You know, we can joke about anything as men. We can actually throw each other, but we know there are certain things you're just not. When, oh, they, there you are. There you are, bro. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, you were still talking about how men don't know, you know, when it comes to psychological warfare, they're not as good. And so it's more of a reaction. Please. Yeah. Continue. Okay. First and foremost, my apologies to, you know, you and everyone else for, you know, the phone network. So all good. um, Yeah. Uh, for us as men, it's something quite difficult for us to go toe to toe with women when it comes to a war of words. Mm. And the only no is going to be physical. That's the truth. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. A a woman with a poisonous tongue is just as dangerous as a man with an uncontrollable fist. They are both the same. But when it comes to this abuse, you are only looking at the men committing the what the physical abuse you are not looking at the women who are committing what the emotional abuse the psychological abuse that is the reason why you see most men tend to be alcoholics most married guys they are alcoholics they would rather be i finish work around four right and then they go straight uh to the bar then around eight nine they come home when the wife is already what asleep, then they just they just also what go into the blanket sleep mm-hmm. again when go to work because they are afraid of their woman undermining them because she will undermine them. Yeah. But let me ask you this though. However, I mean, as men, men tend to say that they are the leaders in the community, leaders in the family. Shouldn't a, a man take it upon himself then to, you know, either educate himself, get therapy, whatever it is, in order to be able to either not necessarily take that 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 sharp tongue from his wife, but be able to say something or basically set a boundary where he says, this is enough. I'm not going to stand up for this and just walk away. That is now what, what is being termed toxic my masculinity now. When a man... Uh, you know, wants to be in control, wants to be a leader, they will now say, 
uh, you are now being toxic. That is the problem because these men, every single time they uh, you know switch on their TV, they log on on their social medias, they are being told to be a man is to be toxic because those very things like taking control, that is what it means to be a man. But now you're being told you don't you have to do that. If you do that, you're being what? Toxic. That is the problem. It's supposed to be happy wife, happy life, happy marriage. And so these men now become slaves to their women. The majority of married guys are just slaves to their women. And, you know, being rewarded uh, maybe twice, thrice a month with some, you know, use of the vagina and, you know, life goes on. Wow. Oh. So as someone who's, I mean, looking at, at this playing out, if you found yourself in a similar situation where you're with a woman, let's say a wife with such a vicious tongue, how would you deal with it? I would never find myself in such, uh, you know, a circle, but I'm going to come to that. I would never find myself in such a situation because in the dating phase, you are supposed to be fighting the woman. Like, how does she, you know, handle things, situations? you must be able to vet properly before you actually what crown you know the woman but now most dudes as long as they are given you know some bomb sex with the woman they are cool and then they get to discover you know now that they are married like yo 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 you know what i brought a demon into my life and it's too late because you've already what it committed to the woman yeah Damn, right. Okay. So we brought this up because we're talking about, you know, that aspect of casual sex. You said men and women are different. So, but why, why should we advocate for men to just have casual sex? Why not exercise, you know, dig discipline? No, I, I wouldn't say we're advocating for men to just have, you know, casual sex. But rather what I'm saying is that it's okay for men to have sex with more than one uh, woman. Back in the day now, that is where polygamy came, you know, into, you know, to put order to that, to that casual side of men, polygamy came in. And polygamy was a system that actually benefited both genders now because the man is able to fulfill his sexual nature. But at the same time, it also provided with the opportunity for every woman to actually have a man. Because right now, if you look at society, uh, men are actually few compared to women. Do you know what mm. I mean by that? Because yeah, now, you, yeah. know, you can even say, uh, you can check the statistics, They maybe they'll even say there are more men than women. But now when it comes to the eligible men, the eligible men are very, very, very few. Why? Because number one, you need to understand that we've got men in jail. Many mm. men are actually, you know, compared to women, then you also need to look at, uh, you know, now, uh, I think, I don't know if you call it um, societal progress or, or, I don't know, whatever. Men, some men are now free to practice, you know, uh, that are the, you know, sexual side, oh. uh, the homosexual, okay. I right? You. Yeah. And also you need to look at the majority of men, they're actually financially incapable. Living only, I would say, maybe 10 to 20% of men with 90 to 100% of women. So now, if one man is going to be with one woman, what is going to happen to these all other women? Are they supposed to be, you know, defied, uh, you know, like sentenced to a life of being lonely? I hear, I hear what you're saying, but it has to be a give and take, right? Because I mean, the women don't want that, so the women don't want to share. But oh, you're saying there's not, not enough. The thing is, 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 women want to share, but they, uh, you know, they just don't want to admit to it. Because now, think about it. Have you seen that? Uh, if your woman, if you have a woman, if a woman, uh, let's say, by chance, she opens your phone, right, and then she's uh, perusing through maybe your socials, maybe your WhatsApp, whatever socials use, you know, and if she doesn't find you actually interacting with other women, maybe in a flirty way, you actually think something's wrong with you, deep down. <laughs> women thrive under competition. That is why you see our grandfathers, you know, they were very, very happy because 
they had more than one woman, you know, in their life. The mm. women were, com- you know, to serve them. But now, because you've been programmed to believe that you need to subscribe to this monogamy situation, it's you, the man, who's now, uh, you know, competing to make sure that the woman is happy. And that's why you're miserable as a man. So you reckon that it should be that uh, the woman makes the man happy, not the other way around? Yes, the women as women were created for fun. Women were created for our pleasures, man. Nothing else. Hang on, 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 hang on a second, hang on a second. Just, women were create women were created for our pleasure. Is that what, is that what you said? Yes, their pleasure dolls. You know, like men when they are bored, when we are done with work, when we are exhausted, and then that's where they come in. That's their whole existence. <laughs> that's but if you if you're saying if you're saying women were just created to be our pleasure dolls, then where does that leave marriage? Is that the way that a husband looks at his wife, or are you you don't advocate for marriage? When it comes for marriage, you're supposed, you know, like marriage is supposed to be uh, somewhere you're safe having. You know, you're out there in the world, right? Yeah. You're getting fucked by that. You're getting fucked by your bosses. You're getting fucked by everything. Yeah. When you come home. <laughs> Your pleasure dog, the pleasure dog gives you pleasure. You know, that's your self zone. <laughs> yes, simple as that. Bro, I want to make sure I'm, I'm hearing you correctly. Are you saying that the wife is the pleasure doll or dog? Doll. She's a doll, not a dog. Uh, a doll, a pleasure doll. Okay. A uh, pleasure doll. Wow. Okay. Ex- so you know. you're basically saying, so, so, so women are pleasure dolls, is what you're saying. Women are pleasure dolls. We just... So, right, and they do this. Uh, uh, you know, they even do this, but they, you know, they then they go against themselves, saying we are not pleasure dolls, but <laughs> everything. <laughs> we, no. And simple. Uh, yeah, uh, bro. I want you know. I think people think that what you're saying, they think that you're trolling, but you're being one thousand percent serious, right? Actually, serious. I'm actually serious. Women are sexual objects and men are financial objects. That's how society is. That's how things are. Wow. Okay. Okay. Cool. 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 All right. Now I, 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 I hear what you're saying. So, I mean, if a man wants to be successful with women, then I'm guessing that he fulfills his role and becomes this, this uh, financial object, like make a lot of money so you can play more. Why do you think? I think many women, you know, uh, loiter around, you know, the likes of David or the likes of Drake, you know, all those uh, big celebrities we know about. And for example, uh, I don't know if you know this uh, the billionaire in Nigeria who ended up marrying uh, this young actress. Um, I'm forgetting mm. the name. Of- Is this Dangote or someone else? Dangote. This other billionaire, I'm forgetting, he married a very, very, very young actress. And, you know, he happens to be. Polygamous. That's the thing. Women want the successful guys. That's how it is. That's how it has always been. It just depends on what is defined as success in each generation or in each era. Back mm. in the day, you know, successful guys, like let's say going way, 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 way back. Of course, the successful guys were the guys uh, who controlled, uh, you know, uh, the livestock. The one with uh, the mm. most livestock, yeah. uh, goats, uh, sheep, whatever. The one who controlled, uh, you know, the um, farming uh, when it came to the land okay. with uh, the yeah, 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 the successful guys and the guys who were actually macho, you know, who were muscular, you know, the warriors mm. who could fight, could protect the women. Yeah. Those were, you know, the successful guys. And then, you know, it has always changed uh, as each generation, you know, changes. Uh, now we've got, um, to, we've gotten to a point like, you know, we're now using money. The guy who, who has the most money, women want that guy. Because what are they looking for? They are looking for protection. They are looking for provision. That's what they are looking for. But uh, doesn't that just reduce women to just, I mean, as you say, just looking for that? I mean, some women want love, right? Some women want a little bit more than just, you know, money. Some, I mean, say, for example, have a look at, have a look at women from like, you know, 
uh, like la- Latino backgrounds, Latino backgrounds, you know, they have a, a man who works as a, whatever, garden boy or something. They're very loyal to him. They make his food. They, you know, that, that is a, wouldn't you say that's an example of a woman who's not up chasing. It's the best they can get. If a woman is with you, you are the best she can get at that point in time. If someone better came, she was going to go for that guy. She is with you because you are someone better. You are the better option for her at that time. Even if you're a garden boy, she looked at the other men. They are not okay. Women don't love men. They love the value they get from men. Go to divorce court. No woman is saying, I want my love back. She's saying, I want half of your shit. Women yeah. love him with that. Go to divorce court. No woman is ever saying good. I want, uh, you know, the love that I gave to this man. No, she's saying, I want 50% of this nigga's shit. Damn, girl. Why are you making me think now? Yeah. But hang on. But, but, but no, man. But no, man. That reduces relationships to just this transactional thing where it's just we want to play, they want to get paid. I mean, surely there's going to be a, a bit more to, to relationships than that. Are more about uh, you know value exchange. Marriage has always been about value exchange, ever since way back. It has always been about value exchange, and of course, love is the you know marketing tool used to you know. <laughs> love is just a marketing scheme. If anything, I would say maybe it's the men who fell for the you know marketing scheme. Men ended up genuinely loving women. But women don't love men. That is why you see, you can be a rich dude and you still look at a broke woman. You know, like, okay, come here, you're brokey, I'm going to change your life. But a rich woman, she would never, ever, ever look at a broke man. She doesn't want anything to do with a broke man because the broke man has no value. Wow. Yes. That is why. But so, but then what would you say was happening back in the day then? What, what was happening back in the day was people are actually understood uh, the reason why they got married. You know what? We just want to, you know, to create a family. Mm-hmm. And it, it doesn't mean that at every point in time, we are going to be loving each other. We're mm-hmm. just going to be mm-hmm. duty that, that we signed up for. And that is the biggest problem we have today now. People think that when they are with someone, they have to be in love with them every single day, which is bullshit. Love is just like sugar. It quickly phases out. By the time you get to your second year, maybe even after six months, you're no longer feeling in love every single day with a person. But it's now more about you being disciplined to the commitments that you actually signed up for. Right. Okay. It's about Marriage has always been about commitment, not love. Right. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so going and having a look, a deeper look into this this casual sex thing. What? So, what is wrong then with a man who decides to, you know, wife a woman who has a high body count? What What is wrong with that? You're obviously going to be compared. For starters, he's obviously going to compare you with the previous dudes who were there. It's just like uh, that simple example when it comes to, you know, cars. Mm, mm, mm. For a man, a man, I would say, is a driver. A driver who has driven many cars is very much experienced. And when he finally decides, you know, like, I'm buying this car, he's going to drive that car, you know, perfectly. He's going to take care of that car perfectly. But now when a car has been driven by many drivers, what it would you know, place left, what, put it, uh, you know, or at the, you know, crash. Yeah, I, I hear what you're saying, bro, but you, women aren't cars, though. So I'll yeah. give you, let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. We ride them. We ride <laughs> women. <Yeah. laughs> let me give you an example. Yeah, uh, let me... <laughs> the woman on top, she's not even going to ask five minutes. She can't drive, you know. Drive <laughs> the okay, let me give you an example, bro. Right. So take take a woman who has she's she's been a victim. Okay. A victim. 
a victim of sexual abuse, right? Let's say you've been a victim of a sexual abuse. Let, let's say, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let, let, me, let me paint the picture for you. Sexual abuse where it was, it was a gang of guys, let's say six or seven, okay? You take, you take that woman, right? And before that, she was a virgin. Yes. Do you look at her the same way as a woman who is in college and she knowingly wanted to sleep with an intern? interact with and have casual sex with six or seven different guys. Is that the same thing in your eye? They are not the same. She's actually worse. Though it's She's not, worse? Actually worse now. Because this one now, she was actually, you know, psychologically damaged as well. Mm-hmm. Meaning if you're going to a woman, you're actually going to have to treat her the same way those guys treated her. Mm-hmm. That's the truth. Wait, 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 wait. wait. So what you're saying is the, the woman who was abused if you get with her, you have to treat her the same way that the her abusers treated her. Yes, if you don't do, I don't that, understand. Go, here's the thing: uh, wounded dogs, wounded dogs can never be rehabilitated. It's a simple analogy. Wounded, a wounded dog can never be rehabilitated. I'm sorry to say this: you are not Jesus, my guy. You are mm. not Jesus. You never. She cannot be saved. If you are going to willing to be with that woman, I'm telling you this, psychologically, she is going to be uh, someone who responds to what, you know, that trauma. If you are not willing to do the same things that happened to her, she's never going to respect you. That is why you see, let's say, women uh, who are with uh, physically abusive guys, they tend to run away from these marriages, uh, you know, from influence of friends and whatever. Then they get with a soft guy. They are going to run all over the guy because they think it's not man enough because of what they're used to. They're used to being beaten. That's the same thing here. You are not Jesus. That is why I always say, if you find out about someone's history and they went through something like that, the best thing you can do for you and for them is to just run your, you know, you just have to run them. Abort mission. You're not Jesus. But on this occasion, though, a, a crime would have been committed. I, it's different to, I have heard the yes, analogy that you're talking about, about a woman who is in an abusive... wife was to be raped and I would uh, find out about it. We are breaking up. We are divorcing. There's nothing I can do for her. She has been psychologically damaged. And I Wait, bro. Never... Did you yeah. say, because you, you kind of dropped that a little bit. Did you say if, you're, if you found out that your wife was raped, you're going to divorce her? Yes, because I can not rehabilitated she's some she's now a new being she's not the same person that i was with you know before that happened so so you don't think it's possible for her to be as you say rehabilitated you can't you can't rehabilitate uh someone out of such trauma that is why you see most of these women who were uh sexually abused they tend Mm. to you know if they are going to be, you know, in uh, sexual relations with the opposite gender, they tend to want, you know, uh, this type of, they tend to have this kinky, uh, you know, sexual, uh, I don't know, uh, kinks. You know, they want to be talked, they want to be tied up, they want to be beaten, yeah. you know, like, weird. Everything is just weird. So, so if you're saying that, then I guess then it follows that, uh, uh, a man or a boy who has been who's a victim of abuse as well can never be rehabilitated. Yes, that is why you see the majority of them now tend to you know become um, not just to you know I I don't want to diss you know those people from that other community, but if you look at the statistics, a majority of people from that other community were actually mm. men were victims of sexual abuse. Right. Okay. But I just want to make sure that, like, because I I think there's a distinction between um, someone who's a victim of a crime, right, and and someone who was in a relationship. Actually, you know what? Actually, if she does get hit in a relationship, she's still a victim of a crime, you know. But, But what you're saying is it doesn't matter. If she was a victim of sexual abuse, she is pretty much what you're saying is she's damaged goods. Yeah. She's damaged good. I think you need to start understanding this about life. Mm. Happens. And sometimes life isn't fair. That's the truth. Life isn't fair sometimes. 
And I actually pity with, you know, people who uh, went through such things. But at the same time, I also pity with people who would want to start relations with them because they are now dealing with things that they can never watch, they can never fix. Right. So let me let me ask you this. With my respect to you, with my respect to your family, I don't know what your situation is, but if you had a daughter yes. who was a victim of, of a crime, this particular crime, are you telling me that you're going to tell your daughter that she's pretty much damaged goods? I won't tell, but it's something that uh, she would know. It's something that she would know because when it comes to me, the teachings that are going to be in my house or in my, uh, you know, homestead are that, you know, the moment, you know, you end up having sex with um, more than one guy, many men and stuff, you're pretty much damaged goods. Yeah, no, but I'm talking about the, the crime. So this one is different, right? So if she was a victim of... The thing, it's not about whether it was intentional or not. The fact that it happened, many people forget is as simple as that. She's damaged goods. I don't have to like it, of course, I'm a father, but that's the fact. Mm-hmm. So, ex- I don't just have to accept. And it's up to her to, to figure out how she's going to deal with it. So, if, if a young man comes to you saying he wants to marry your daughter, who was a victim of a crime, what are you saying back to this young man who says, you know what, I think she's great, you know, she, she makes me happy, I really love her, I want to marry her. Marry her, my, marry her, my son. Give me the money. Who am I to turn away a cell? My house and uh, you know, going to save my job. <laughs> I'm going to say, give me the money, but then I'll be saying, like, Job, you know, this nigga is going to be in trouble, you know. I'll be laughing my ass behind uh, the back, like, um, bro, right. Okay, well, I guess this takes us into what a lot of people wanted me to ask you about. Uh, do you have anything again? I, I don't think you do, but people want me to ask you, do you have anything against single mothers? I don't well, maybe have, you do. I don't know. Well, here's the thing. Uh, I think when it comes to the single mother issue, mm. I don't. Uh, I don't necessarily have anything against uh, individuals, but I have something against whole notion uh, of wanting to elevate, wanting to praise uh, these women for being single mothers. There is nothing that we should be celebrating about women being single mothers. We should actually, you know, be ashamed of ourselves that we've uh, gotten to a point where society has many single mothers compared to women in marriages. It's actually a shame. Mm. Right. right. Well, it, it, let, me, let me ask you just with a, an example. If we have an example where a young man has impregnated a woman, right, and he has run away from his responsibility, uh, you still looking at that particular single woman the same way? Yes, she's very stupid. Why did she uh, let a man make a mother before he made a wife? She's very stupid. Are you then saying it's better to have a termination rather than? No, I'm just saying she's very stupid. Why did she allow you know a dumbass you know to even you know be inside between her legs? She's a dumbass. She's dumb that woman. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Most likely, if you're a single mother, um, the result not being uh, you, uh, your husband having, uh, you know, died, you know, you are a dumbass. You are dumb. You are literally dumb because you let a stupid, irresponsible man, you know, between your legs. You're dumb. Mm. What about in instances of domestic violence, domestic abuse? So she was married, her husband was abusive. You're dumb. Because... Like I'm saying, before people get married, before mm. people get married, people date each other. When you are dating each other, that is the process whereby you are going to be studying each other. But no, you don't give a shit about that because as long as the man is fucking out money, as long as the man is fucking you good, you don't give a shit about his character. You don't even take time to understand who is this man. Most women who get, uh, you know, married to these abusive guys, if mm. you ask them, had you ever even provoked him intentionally wanting to see how he reacts, how he handles, you know, uh, you know, conflict, mm. they'll be like, oh, no, I never did it. I never did it. You are a dumbass. Mm. But I think, I think 
think what you're saying, right, it has, it, it only has merit, right, to, to a certain extent, because you, you can't vet every single situation in life, right? So you cannot vet someone. So you can only do so much. Yeah. You know, we, we recently, let, let me say, we recently had the, the, like COVID, right? That was unprecedented. We haven't experienced anything like it, right? So, so people, you were, for the first time, you're going to see how people react or act under these particular circumstances, which is very, very unique. So I guess my question is, what if someone marries someone and there have been no signs? This person has been absolutely perfect. However, we are presented with another situation in the world where something happens, a break, whatever it may be. Mm-hmm. And you see this side of your partner for the first time and the woman's, you know, and this guy's abusive. Neo. Yeah. Neo. That's are always there. But people choose to ignore them because they are in love. Like mm. I always say, love, oh. they're in love. They choose to ignore these things. You cannot, and most of the times, people who convince themselves, even after noticing the red flags, they will convince themselves that I am going to love this person out of their toxic traits, mm. which is important. You cannot, uh, you cannot love someone out of their, you know, learned behavior. This is something that someone has, uh, you know, uh, learned from wherever they land it, this is something that has been programmed into someone and you think you're going to change that person. That's like, uh, let's say you get down with me and then you say, Good, I'm going to love this Shadaya guy out of his values, out of uh, his principles, out of his beliefs, which is stupid. And then when I start practicing my beliefs and then you start crying like, why is he doing this? Why is he doing this? You cannot love someone out of their toxic traits. Mm. You can always tell that this person is abusive. Uh, promiscuous people, you can always tell that this person is promiscuous, you know, but people choose to ignore it or convince themselves that they can love a person out of that. I hear what you're saying. I definitely do. If you had a son and he had to choose, he came to you who's like, Pops, man, I don't know what to choose. On one hand, I have a woman. She's uh, she's a single mom. You know, she's got two beautiful kids, uh, you know, the, the father passed away. And on the other hand, I have another woman. She has a 25 body count. They're both like 22. I, I have no idea, Pops. Well, wh- what should I do? What's your advice yeah, well, and why? I would actually slap the shit out of him. Like, why? <laughs> why does he have, you know, like, <laughs> such stupid options in his life, you know? I was slaving like, dude, you're my son, and mm. these are the options to bring me, you know, damaged goods. You know, like this one has got uh, evidence of being damaged, and this one, you know, no evidence, but mm. still damaged. Come on, dude. Come on, dude. You're my son. Why are you bringing this nonsense? So, neither, I'm guessing? No, no, you're not going to marry any of them, and I'm not going to bless that union. If if you had to choose, gun to your head, you have to choose. I cannot choose a man is trash. Trash is trash. Wow. Can you but you do understand why people would feel uh offended or upset at you saying people are, are trash. You can understand why people would be upset, right? If you're offended, and the reason why we actually have to use such harsh words is to actually warn, you know, the coming generation that if you do that that is how we are going to view you mm. that is how we are we are doing that so that the younger women you know don't end up you know in that same situation because they know they are going to be treated like that and i don't want to lie to any woman if you have a kid if you have a child no man looks at you like you're a prize the same way if a man is broke no woman looks at him like he's a prize. Simple as that. However, let's 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 agree to disagree on this one because what you would call them, you'd call them simps. They exist. Yeah, they exist, and I think at the same time they have to exist. Uh, you know, to balance things out. You know, like you mm. know, there's uh, I would say alpha dudes. You know, who are not feeling it, who are not in the mood. You know, to do their duties. Or whatever, they just know the sims are going to come and chip in. (laughs) Chip in. (laughs) Right. Okay. So they're necessary. So, in other words, then, because 
you know, these quote unquote simps exist, then we can agree that women who you call damaged goods do have the opportunity to get married because these men exist, correct? They will get married to, you know, men who don't have standards. The same. The men who don't have standards. You know, like um, those who think less of themselves. The only reason a man would marry a single mother is because the dude thinks less of himself. <laughs> no dude would that I am the guy who is going to go for a woman who, you know, incubated another man's sperm for nine months. <laughs> then having so that, uh, you know, men's sperm. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you know, uh, even in the, you know, I would say, um, they know deep down, like mm. I'm in, they will, they will know this to themselves. Mm. Like, I mean, the only way I can get sex, the only way I can get access to this woman, if I'm going to clean up after the other mm. guys, they know this. Damn. But I mean, men marry for different reasons. Men marry for legacy, etc. cetera. I, I mean, if what? I think there, there would be a lot of men, I, I'd say, I'd even say, Gospels to say a lot of, quote unquote, alpha men who would say marry the daughter of a, let's say, a strive, you know, from your country. If, if yeah, I don't know if he has a daughter. If he had a daughter with a child, there are a lot of men who would still want to marry her. That's the thing, because they are losers. They want to be taken care of by who? By strive, man. See, was, uh, you know, legacy. That's the thing. Alpha dudes are out there to create their own legacies. You are not mm-hmm. looking for her, looking to be taken care of by another man, by another man's legacy. Mm. And that yeah. is what makes but that pride of wanting to create your own path, to lay down your own legacy. Mm, mm, mm. Is that We don't, don't give a shit about a woman's achievements, you know, like uh, she could be, you know, a woman who's well uh, articulated when it comes to business, she's got these degrees, she earns this money, she's got so-and-so properties. By the end of, at the end of the day, the most important factors to a man is this, bitch, can you talk? Bitch, can you wash my, uh, you know, my dirty underpants? Bitch, mm. can you actually pleasure me? Bitch, can you respect me? That's what we give a fuck about. We don't give a fuck about you, I call it, there's a woman. Mm. Uh, yeah, so well, that is that is true. Uh, but then, so no. give me an example then of okay. Yeah, the go same, ahead, go ahead. You, mm. Same way, women don't give a shit about your character as a man. The only thing they give a fuck about is are you effective. That is why you see women always flock around these dudes we call bad, 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 bad dudes. You know, uh, the corrupt politicians. Um, these are uh, thieving tenderpreneurs, mm. given, and, you know, that for bad boys. Because at the end of the day, for women, it's just about how you affect them feel something. Right, right. Yeah. Now, I hear what you're saying. So, so then, uh, a woman in her 30s, even as a virgin, now it becomes, uh, uh, you know, of course, in her thirties. Now she gets to have a pass because, uh, you know, she's a virgin. But now, at the end of the day, you start asking yourself, how do you get to thirty, uh, you know, unmarried? How do you get to thirty unmarried? There must be something wrong with you. Most of the strict, time, strict because father, it, because it means people. There were many men who actually approached you. You can't tell me that all oh, those men were wrong for you. To get to a point where you are thirty. Well, I think, think I think it, it's not that difficult to see because you know when people think about daddy issues, right? They tend to think about daddy issues from a negative perspective that this person didn't have a male role model, and so you know the the first man that gives her a compliment, she's gonna you know fall in love with them. However, there's another type of daddy issues where uh, a woman comes from a family where the father was so supportive, was such a great guy that it's difficult for her to find someone just as good. That's, you understand what I'm saying? It's a pro- problem now. You, when it comes to a partner, you can't say you want a replica of your dad. You can't say you want a replica of your mother. Of mm. course, you'd want certain traits that your father exhibited or your mother exhibited. But when it comes down to a point whereby you're saying you want an exact replica of your dad. You are an idiot. You are a dumbass as well. Mm. 
Mm. Probably not not exact replica, but you can see how someone who comes from a good family will have high standards for the man that she wants, right? They have high standards, but now most of those women, they tend to want the men who comes into their life to be just like their dad, which yeah. is impossible, which yeah. is very... And that's why you see these spoiled, uh, you know, daddy's girls end up also, you know, along that path, being single forever because they are expecting a man to come and be an exact replica of their dad. So best case scenario for a woman in 2024 is what exactly? Get married when you're young. The same way it has always been, you know, like in 1948, in 1901, in 1880, whatever. Get married mm. when That's a solution? Yes, that's a solution to your whole, uh, you know, to your life. Because when a man, when a woman doesn't have a man, she's going to find something to support her. And it could be a job, it could be an ideology or whatever, but it's going to make her miserable. The only way a woman can actually be happy is when she's committed to a man. Simply as that, everything else is just a coping mechanism. Um, right, okay. What, do you, what are your thoughts on um, OnlyFans, both guys and girls? Uh, uh, it's degeneracy, nothing else. It's just degeneracy. Why would people go, uh, I don't know, on a social platform uh, to do sexual acts, to show their naked bodies for what purposes? For what? So do you, do you look at it the same way as a woman doing it as a guy doing it? They are both idiots, especially as a man. What are you doing there? You are now... You've reduced yourself to a, a point where you are selling your body. Something that is, uh, you know, meant for women. I mean, the oldest, uh, uh, what is it, the oldest profession mm, recorded the in the world? Yeah. Prostitution. You've reduced yourself to that as a man. Like, hey, I'm going to be selling my dick. Like, seriously. Yeah. No, I, what's that like in, in Zimbabwe, actually, is, is uh, things like OnlyFans, are they very popular? Because Zimbabwe seems to be very, a very conservative country. Like, it doesn't look like they stand for any, any of that. Of course, we but, uh, you know, these, uh, you know, these, uh, how do I say it? Influences, for a lack of a better of a word, and mm. um, musicians uh, who are actually now starting to, you know, join the web of the OnlyFans thing, but it's not something big yet in Zimbabwe. Not something mm. big. So slowly, slowly getting there. Yeah, but it's getting there. I mean, eventually, I mean, the single mother thing wasn't popular, but now, you know, if you are to throw a stone in the street, you are most likely to eat a single mother. So, maybe, <laughs> I guess, so the OnlyFans thing is going to be Blowing up, easy yeah. money, I'm, easy money. So, you know. So, 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 for yourself, dog, like, do you like? Do you see yourself getting married, having, like, or do you want like a? Uh, I was gonna say a PDD situation, but now PDD is just now we know he's something else. Like maybe Nick Cannon, Nick Cannon situation, Nick Cannon, Nick Cannon maybe. For me, I would say I would get married. Yeah, I definitely have plans to get married. Yeah, to one woman. Of course. I'll get married to one woman, but that woman that maybe I'm going to be fucking one woman for the rest of my life, you know. Definitely not that okay. shit. Hang on, hang on a second. Hang on a second. Now you're saying a lot of things at the same time. Are you going to be, is it just one of those things where it's known that, you know, you're going to have, as they call in Zimbabwe, a small house, or you want your wife to have an understanding that this is what, quote unquote, men do? already if you are with me if as a woman if you're going to be with me it's something that you understand that you know like i mean alpha dude you know bitches love me i love bitches it's part of who i am as a man so yeah it's going to happen you know that shit and by the way the reason uh our granddads they were polygamous mm. right then when it came to our dads you know that's when the monogamy wave started right so our dads couldn't be, you know, polygamous. They were monogamous in courts. But the reason why their marriages lasted as well was because they had another woman. They had another woman in the picture. 
I will tell you this. If you want to see a miserable man, it is a man who only has one woman in his life. That man is miserable. Damn, dog, you mean that? Yes, that man is miserable because most of the times, um, those are the dudes who end up committing suicide. Those are the dudes who end up analyzing women. They're just miserable, those dudes. They're just miserable. But what if, but, but what if he's happy, bro? What if his wife gives him everything that he needs? What if he's happy? He can never be happy with one woman. That's impossible. But but that is an opinion, though. That's that's You're saying that is an opinion. Because people will say it's an opinion because we can't properly do a research on it. But the truth is this. You can never be happy with one woman. Rather, what you, you should say is that you can tolerate one woman, you know, to be like, uh, this is the one that I'll say like the official woman in my life. But at the same time, you still need other women. Damn, dog. But that sounds like you're advocating for men to be unfaithful. Uh, men, uh, w- w- now, a very interesting aspect as well. The mm. word loyalty. I think people got to a point whereby loyalty is now defined from a feminine uh, perspective. As long as a man, you are able to provide, to protect, to come up with solutions, to provide solutions to your woman and to penetrate it, you are as faithful as you can be. (laughs) That type of loyalty or faithfulness you were talking about applies to women. It's the woman who's supposed to just sleep with one dude. But for you, you can sleep with as many women as you want and as long as you are able to fulfill what we call the four Ps. Protection, provision, uh, provision of solutions, and penetration to these women. You are good. Mm. You're actually being loyal to those women. Right. But I think I never actually asked you this at the start, but where does the justification come from this idea that a man should be able to have multiple, but a woman shouldn't? I mean, I'm happy to hear, like, you know, even if you can say biological, but if you can help me understand, like, where does that idea come from? For example, you throw away the fact that we say that it's a biological, uh, you know, uh, thing. Let's mm. look at it from a religious uh, perspective. Almost all religions worldwide, despite the major, major, major differences people have, somehow all those major religions, they all mm. agreed on what men can fuck around, right? And then when we look at the couches, all the different couches all around the world, they would, uh, you know, go against each other on many things, but one thing that men can fuck around. <laughs> then when all the rest is, you know, for brown people, for pink people, people, they hate each other, you know, passionately. They can disagree on many things, but one thing they agreed, the man can fuck around. It's just how it is. Men can fuck around. Well, let me use your same logic to then say, if you have a look at all across the world, you look at every single continent, Right. The one thing that they have all agreed upon is that the black person is at the bottom of the rung of society. The black person is the slave. So according to you, then, that it means that our biological imperative as black people are to be slaves and servants. Yeah, that's, that's why you see. Uh, come on, Neo. You, you are from SA, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Why do you think that uh, the DA ended up getting, you know, all of us, you know, like, Compared to any other party, of course, the ANC retained, uh, it got what, 30%, 30 or 40%? percent yeah, 40 they got 40 something, yeah. But don't forget, the DA has been uh, the opposition for a very long time. They've always been second, bro. It's not a, it's not a surprise. It yeah, got more than it previously got from the previous, what, previous uh, elections and stuff. Because the black people in South Africa, they were like, you know what? These black motherfuckers have been in charge, you know, for almost, I don't know, 20, is it 20, 30 years? Yeah, 20 now. Oh, 30, actually. Ooh, 30, 30, yeah, 30. Damn. They've been in charge for 30 years. Ah, nah, black people can't do this shit. Let us return this shit to the rightful owners. Simple as so, that. So, so are you... I don't even believe in the ideology that people are equal. People are not equal. Mm. There's no such thing on this earth. There has to be a hierarchy. 
those at the top and those at the bottom. If you don't like being at the bottom, then you have to fight your way to get to the top. So I want to make sure that we're, we're following. So, uh, so are black people's biological imperative to be slaves and to be at the bottom? Because I'm just using your logic to say, because you said all these cultures, right? Remember you said all these cultures, yes. right? The man can F around. They show all stuff, but black people tend to perform well, very well when they are being uh, instructed by a white person. Mm. Even if you are mm. a company right now and you've got a black CEO and a white CEO, your own employees, your own black employees, they are going to listen more to the white uh, CEO compared to the black CEO. It's something deep down uh, ingrained in us. We feel like uh, it's something that we've accepted that we are at the bottom and we respect and we put white people on a pedestal. That's how it is. Damn, dog. Okay, so because black people are definitely at the bottom and it's a biological imperative, so it also follows that it's men's biological imperative to F around and have more than one woman. So a yeah, happy man right. is a man with multiple women in his hand. Yeah, same with that. Right. Let me ask you something, dog. Um, what do you think about um, men crying in front of their women or being vulnerable in front of their women? That's a, a pussy move. That's a pussy move. Yeah. Uh, yeah, explain why. That's like bleeding next to a shark. Your, <laughs> your woman never wants to see you weak. I'm sorry to say this. Yeah. Your woman wants to see you weak because she is already weak. Mm. Okay. This, you, job, right? you lose your job and then you come home and you are fucking stressed. You know, I lost my job. What are we going to do? Dude. Your woman has no idea what you're going to do. She doesn't need, you know, to, you know, have that stress. That is your shit. You handle that shit. You are a man. Mm. A man is a are supposed to handle everything that comes into your life. Mm. What are you expecting, woman? What are you expecting from the woman to kiss you, to carry you on your back, uh, on your back? What, what, what are you expecting from the woman when you're unloading your problems on her? So, you're not saying men shouldn't cry. You're just saying don't cry in front of your woman. Yes. Don't be vulnerable in front of her. Go to the bush and cry alone and then come back. Yeah, your that's woman, probably the only thing. Your woman should never see you vulnerable. That's when the attraction ceases. She ceases to be attracted to you. The moment she sees you vulnerable, she ceases to be attracted to you. Yeah, that's probably yeah, that's probably the only thing we agree like fully, fully on. Yeah, that that one I agree. Go to the bush. Go, <laughs> go to the bush. Go into the one thousand percent. Then come back if you have to cry. For me, so, though, I don't even encourage you to cry. So where where should men get their strength from? Then you know, um, I mean, we sort of touched on it a little bit about the fact that you know suicide. Men should get their strength from other men. Mm. We need. You need to have a band of brothers you can depend on. For example, why do you think Andrew Tate stays with his brother? Mm. That's his emotional support. Mm. Because there's nothing that can happen into Andrew's life that you can tell a woman that she's going to give him any advice better than his brother is going to advise him on. But now we tended uh, we ended up uh, in a society where Men stopped having, you know, these, uh, you know, bonds. Men stopped having these uh, kind of talks whereby it was just men being men amongst men, right? Mm. Back in, uh, you know, like back in the day, funny, right? Uh, like here in our culture, with what we called padare, a court of men. It was okay. a court of men, men just being men, unloading their stuff, unloading their issues. And they would get help from other men, the you know the older dogs. They would actually advise the younger dogs like, "This is how you, this is how you." Mm. With the erosion of you know that culture, we still had gym. men used to go to gyms. They would go to the gym not only to live, but to talk about the shit that they are going through. They would get advice from other men. Men would go to bars. And they would also unload their problems. And they will be told on how to handle them with other men. 
men would go to the barber shops, you know, they would talk about their issues and they would be told on how to handle these issues. But now we ended up creating a situation whereby we said, you know, like we can't have uh, spaces where men are just men by themselves. Gyms, let's put in the women. The barber shops, let's put in the women. Everywhere, let's put in the women to a mm. point whereby we don't have spaces where they can just be men. They can just talk about things that men face, things that men go through. Yeah, that that I advocate for. You definitely have a point there. It's 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 unfortunate that that's happening. You know, men men do need those spaces, but unfortunately, the spaces have been invaded. The spaces have been invaded, right? And we don't and we can't really do anything about it. So, as a man, if you're going through shit, you need to talk to another man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Most likely, a man older than you, because he's been at that age. He's years, mm-hmm. most likely that same problem you're facing as well. Mm. Mm. True, true, true that. Actually, about uh, Andrew Tapero, what, what do you think about these charges against them? Ah, bullshit. They're just bullshit. Why do you say that? Because they are bullshit. At the end of the day, to this very day, you can't uh, have someone uh, in court for two years with no concrete evidence to a point whereby, you know, you end up forcing uh, the so-called victims to change, uh, you know, their stories. That's bullshit. But but what you're saying is not what's written on the court documents. Though. It sounds like you're getting information from social media because that the court documents say something totally different, right? Totally, totally different. What documents say he was uh, trafficking women, but the women, they don't say they were being trafficked, but the women are being told, no, by definition of law, this so, so, so in law, you are being trafficked. But the women are saying, I wasn't well, well, was, was well let's let, let's say that one of the examples that is exactly what's happening, but that sounds like a victim of traffic. That is literally what happens when someone gets traffic, right? They don't even see it. Like it's like being an abuse victim. I'll t- I'll tell you what. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what. I, I'll, I'll tell you what, right? Andrew, I I really used to like Andrew a lot, right? The moment that I was like, hang on a second, I I think you know he's he's got he's got some things to say that that I think can help a lot of men. But when you have a look at the videos, right? So videos of him, for example, my simple question to you is this: You see, when you see a video of him hitting that girl with a belt, right, and saying, "This is why I beat you up," you know, "This is why you know because you don't listen," that type of thing. Right, I mean, it's clear. It's right there. What? So, by the way, by the way, by yeah. the way, let me divert a bit. Mm-hmm. Why is it uh, when a mother, you know, when a parent, uh, you know, spanks their child, when a parent spanks their child, uh, people say, uh, you know, it is defined as uh, disciplining a child. Right? Mm-hmm. But when a man thinks his woman is about abuse, how does this work? How does this work? I think co- context is everything, right? So I th- one of the ways in which we will know if two consenting adults, like if there's whipping or smacking being done, is facial expression, right? I think in some of these videos, it doesn't look like one of the women is having a great time. I mean, on one of them, she locked herself in the, in the like she, she ran and she closed the door behind and, her. So my question the, is, is that is that role play? I mean, what's going on there? Role play, and most likely it was role play because these women are saying, no, we weren't being abused, dude. We weren't being abused. And by the way, if they were really, by now he should be in jail. Come on, he should be. Well, in no, jail. no, 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 because you know the the wheels of justice. Everyone knows the wheels of justice turn slow, bro. I mean, look at someone like look, look at look at look at my country. Look at my country, right? Look at South oh, Africa, right? Dude, Neil, mm. there is no such thing as the wheel of justice. If justice really existed, right? Mm. Uh, there are better, you know, cases compared to Andrew Tate's uh, so-called case. The Epstein Island list, nothing mm. is, be- and nothing is ever going to be done. I want you're you right. to just, yes, yeah, ever- right. so I think that throws away the whole issue. But, but, after you, but the thing is, you see, he's associates. Andrew's associates are already in trouble. Current status, current status, mm. uh, 
Porto from many, uh, um, you know, actually say, you know, dudes, you can go wherever you want to go, meaning they don't have any case. Until Andrew and Tate are charged with, uh, you know, anything, they are innocent. To prevent- You're right, 1,000%. However, the court yesterday reversed that decision, and the decision is final. They are no longer allowed to leave. But we, we start saying the globalists are actually in on it. Come on, we all know. But bro, know. Bro, why is it, like, for example, if I, if, if, if I right, if, if I do something like, let's say, I punch you in the face, right? Let, let me just say, hang on. Let me say, if I, if I punch you in the face, and in return, you absolutely, you kick my ass. I can't, I can't blame it on the Matrix. Yeah. Bro, <laughs> I literally provoked you, right? Know this, yeah. Successful men, mm. one way or the other, in this era that we are living in, mm-hmm. either be a rapist or, or uh, an abuser, a physical abuser. This is something that I even accepted for myself. I don't know when the churches are coming, but they are definitely coming at some point in time. I'm going to be, you know. <laughs> Maybe you know, for you as well. Oh, oh yeah, physical abuser. This is something you know that is uh, you know synonymous with uh, success. If end it, if that's the case, let's end it there. It's yeah. Something okay. Sin- All right. It's something that you're going to be accused of, mm. and in our current uh, society. If the woman says you did it, and if the society says you did it, you did it. Right now, I was looking at the case of um, Vince McMahon. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, no. This woman was willing to accept money from Vince McMahon. And then when the money stopped coming in, that's when she started saying, I was being abused. Bullshit. Mm. Bullshit. Okay, I hear you. All right. Final thing, bro, before I let you go, Trump assassination, do you think that was planned? What's going on there? Um, when people say that, you know, Trump staged that, come on, who staged such a thing to a point whereby even if you get an experienced sniper and tell them that, uh, so it's, you know, if this mark is supposed to hit exactly, you know, on my ear, dude, dude. That is a bullet. There is no one who can ever, you know, do that. That was in state. People don't want Trump in. We all know that. He was rigged in the elections, in the previous election. He was rigged. For the first time, it was clear that American uh, elections can also do it, you know, the African way. He was rigged out of power. And this very same time, they've tried everything. Dude, we are going to arrest you for paying, uh, you know, for sex from a sex mm. worker. I but, paid, bro, and you are charging me, you know, for paying for a sex worker. Well, it wasn't for paying for the sex worker. That's that's not what I. But, but my question to you, bro, is it, they they had to call it, you know, this fancy name, but the issue was that dude, you paid the sex worker. Come on, who doesn't but, pay? But my question to you is this bro why why is it however that when let's say people that you have respect for why is it that when something negative happens to them or they're charged with something why can't why why do you why are you quick to defend them why is, i mean they're human beings people make mistakes why is it difficult for you to actually say like you know what maybe this person could be why are you quick to or to demonize them as well why are you quick to do that. Oh, no, I'm not. Uh, oh, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm simply just. Um... No, no, I'm actually being uh, on the other side because you'd find that ninety mm. percent of the people they just believe like whatever that mm. has been said about this. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Already there's this sensationalism, you know, like mm. they are already guilty, or they've actually been proven guilty. That is my biggest yeah. right. Yeah, but then, okay, I'm going to give you a, a, an example in real time. Just yeah. watch, right? You know that Trump is on the Epstein Island files, right? Yes, I know that. What does that say about him? What does it, it say about him? Nothing yeah. about him. We don't know why he was there. So exactly what I'm talking about. So all of a sudden, when it's when it's Trump, 
we don't know why he was there. However, everyone else, we know exactly why they were there. When it comes to Trump, why is it that, uh, you know, they are trying so much to stop him from competing, you know, for the presidential election? That is my biggest issue. That's a good, because good point. That's a good point. If there's one thing that I've actually noticed in, mm. you know, this fight of ours today, most of the times when the media hates you, you're actually on the right course of history. The American media hates Trump to a point whereby they say nothing good about him. They literally compare him to Hitler. Wow. Okay. The, the same thing they do to Andrew Tate. The same mm. thing they, to, they did to Kevin Samuels. And that is my mm. biggest That's not that. Mm. that is my biggest issue. Whenever you see mainstream media against you, most of the time it is because you are going against what they are trying to program people into believing. Mm, 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 mm. I'm not saying to say that these guys are saints, but I'm saying there must be something to it because why is the entire mainstream media against these guys? That's a good question to ask. Would you ever get into politics? I think politics, uh, it's not my forte. I don't like politics because at the end of the day, when you become a politician, it means I will have to reduce myself to being um, mediocre. Because when you become a politician, you, mm. are, you have to willing to appeal more to people's emotions than people's logic. The best politicians know how to appeal to people's emotions. Mm. The moment you talk to people's uh, logic, you are going to be a bad politician. You are going to fail. You are not most likely going to win anything. And for me, I like, you know, getting people to be logical, not emotional. Politicians just, you know, know the right things to say and they know the masses will you know will get on it for me i don't want to say uh things that make people feel good i want to say things that make people start thinking like what is what is this about mm. Mm -hmm. right right okay okay so it's july bro do you have anything coming up for the rest of the year anything that people should should watch out for check out for any anything in the pipeline uh, uh, it's something in the pipeline but i'm most likely going to be uh in your motherland like sa cape town we've got uh, oh, a semi uh, i'm not so sure if it's this coming month august or september but it's definitely soon and yeah it's something going to be you know interesting why don't you come to australia you know. Why would I come to a country, you know, that uh, demonizes everything that I actually stand for? That is my <laughs> like seriously. That is my biggest issue with, uh, you know, these uh, countries, you know, like You're Australia, right. a, the U.S. I've told people that I've been given many opportunities, you know, like many Zimbabweans are actually migrating, you know, like mm. to Australia, Thailand. Mm. Countries and I always tell them this: even if you are to help me to get to those countries, right? I don't think I can last in those countries uh, even for six months. Either I will be arrested or I'll be deported back because I'm going to say certain things that are not okay there. I'm not the guy who's going to be working like in Australia. Mm -hmm. You can actually work with it, uh, and the dude wants me to call uh, him a she. Come on, I'm actually going to call him, uh, you know, like, dude, stop being, you know, mm -hmm. stop being a club. Mm -hmm. And they get offended, offended. The next thing I find myself being charged, like, uh, I don't know, whatever charges they are. Yeah, uh, it's not that bad, bro. It's not that bad. I, I, if, for me, I cannot pretend. I cannot pretend yeah. that, okay, that's the thing. So I'm going to say, uh, you know, in Africa, in Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. the motherland, as already, ah, come on, you guys, you... It's getting there a little bit, yeah. You, you know, you're getting there. <laughs> well. so, even your Zulu king now, he married a, a single mother, come on, come on. Yeah, come on. Uh, 
man. I don't know. Actually, actually, what one more thing before I, before I let you go, bro? Um, uh, xenophobia in South Africa. What do you think? Is that a real thing? Imagined? It's not real. It's not real, yeah. Xenophobia. It's a real thing. But now, I think we need to look at it. Um, it's something deep and complex, but xenophobia is a real thing. Uh, you guys, you guys, you know, South Africans, you don't understand, you know, like the Zimbabweans and the Nigerians, you don't understand. And you have your reasons. Some of them are actually genuine reasons, and some of them are actually stupid, right? Mm. Uh, when it comes to genuine and reasons, uh, you know, you complain about the high rate of crime, and it seems that some of these crimes actually be conducted, you know, by, by you know, people from my side and people from Nigeria, right? Mm-hmm. But some of your reasons, when you say that we are stealing your jobs, dude, mm-hmm. we are not stealing it because if you look at it, the majority of the jobs that Zimbabweans are doing, these are the mm-hmm. jobs that. Uh, most of you don't even want to be doing. You don't want to be picking the grapes in the farms. You don't want to be, you know, working, uh, you know, the menial jobs as construction workers, you know, mm-hmm. doing exactly. don't want to be, you know, working. Yeah. Those type of jobs where people just look at you some type of way like that. Ah, this is embarrassing. We are willing to do those jobs. Right. Okay. But, but but my question is, bro, what happened to Zim? Because after the white people were kicked out, I thought things were going to go back to normal. I was actually excited for, for Zim. What's happened, right? You guys got the dream. You got the land. What's going on, bro? The shit that can get me in trouble if I go into detail. But I would say, um, when people say that um, Zimbabweans, uh, when they blame us for the way things are, I would say, um uh, it was a process. It's a process. It just did it happen just like that. It's a process. And some of the things that happened in Zimbabwe, we are also mm. now in South Africa happening. It's a process. It's something that happens as a process. Right. Cause I'm gonna be honest, bro. I was really I was really looking forward to my my ex is from is from Zim. I was with her for like a long time, bro, like twelve years. Her un, her un, yeah, uncle is like the CEO of of like Nestle or something in Zimbabwe, you know. And I was really looking forward to come and do business there, man. Come through, man. But now it's like I'm looking at it like, bro, it's been like. I don't know, 15 years, I really don't see any change. I see only a few people eating. I always see, what's his name? Uh, Wicknell. And I'm not trying to say anything negative about him, but I'm always seeing, it looks, it always looks like it's the same people just succeeding and really eating, bro. I mean. So, before we go any further, uh, we've got this saying, Tisa Taura Mazita, we don't mention names. This shit can get me in trouble now, okay. that other side. My this, bad. Hey, My bad. I, I've always tried to, you know, not yeah. get to such talk because at yeah. the end of the day, uh, it's a different um, environment compared to SA, whereby you know you've got um, how do I say speech where you can say certain things like and pretty almost speech kind of like yeah, which is there. But let's just add it. Okay, there. I'll tell you. Oh. All right. <laughs> <laughs> But there are also yes, certain people who yeah. recorded me. They, um, dude, you were saying this. Dude, you were saying that. Uh, right, right. Okay, okay. Nah, it's all good. Bro, it's been an absolute pleasure, man. Thank you very much, man. I do appreciate it. You know, uh, thank you so much for your time, man. I had a great time, you know. But yeah, we'll be in touch, brother. Thanks again, yeah? Okay, bro.